So what are the predictable vision changes with age? Several of these are very predictable. Most body parts are built with redundancy or spare uh, tires, if you like. So there is a normal excess of cells, and we lose them. They drop out with age in almost everything. And until you reach a critical limit, you don't have a problem. So in structures like the cornea, the corneal endothelial cells tend to decline in number with age and you only run into a problem if they've declined below a certain number. The same thing with the retina, which was doing all that chemical processing and the electrical work. The same thing with the nerves. And the same thing with uh, things like your tears, which tend to be less produced as we age, uh, usually in menopause earlier for women than men, but in, in both genders. And the brain processing changes with age. So if you think about that whole complex of things, a change in your vision as you're getting older isn't necessarily just the eyeball. So what kinds of disease states or other changes would we see? We'd see drier eyes, smaller pupils, which let in less light, and that just happens as we age. They don't open as widely and they don't react as well. Changes happen in your lens, and that leads to the colors fading. Uh, because you're looking through a yellow or brown filter. It would be like looking through yellow glass trying to look at an object. Um, floaters happen in the vitreous. That's a normal degenerative change that has mostly nuisance value. Uh, contrast decreases, mostly because of these other changes. We tend to lose rod function, and we may lose rod function more than we lose cone function, but we do lose both. And then, there's some debate about whether we lose some of our peripheral visual field. Um, what other diseases happen more frequently in eyes with age? Cataract, okay? Most people have heard of cataract. I'm sure a number of you have had cataracts either detected or operated on already. Basically, it's the lens of your eye changed in some way. The lens keeps adding layers like an onion or like a tree adding rings. And so it keeps adding material lifelong. So there's a nucleus in the center that was there when you were born and more and more layers add on top of it. This example is kind of the most obvious. It's a posterior cataract right in the center. It sits at the back here, and because it's in the center and close to the back up part of the eye, it usually makes the vision really bad. I call it like the bathroom glass, like looking through that kind of crackled glass, and it's hard to see. What leads to cataracts? Age, ultraviolet exposure, some medications, radiation, some injuries, and some sorts of surgery in the back of the eye, for example. Down at the bottom here, there's a small diagram of what goes on during cataract surgery. So we open into the eye, we open the front part of the lens capsule, we take the material out, we put an artificial lens into the eye, and it sits there protected in that capsule. So you're basically taking out a lens that's turned hazy and replacing it with a clear one. In open-angle glaucoma, which is demonstrated here, the fluid produced in the back part of the eye, which has nothing to do with tears, this is all internal, comes up, it drains around the iris, the colored part, and out through this thing that's like the furnace filter. It's a meshwork. And it drains out of there and into the circulation. And usually the problem isn't that you produce too much, it's that the furnace filter is all clogged up and unfortunately we can't usually change it. So all of our manipulations are to try to help outflow better. Um, angle closure glaucoma is much less common. Why do I bring it up even? Because it's really pretty dramatic. It gives people pain. They may present as if there's something wrong with their abdomen um, because they're nauseated and vomiting from the high pressure, but it's actually an eye problem. It can give them halos and really blurred vision. And the problem here is that the fluid can't get past because somehow 
these things are too close together, so the angle zips up entirely, and then the pressure goes sky high. So rather than going up a bit, it may go from a normal of 15 to about 50. Um, risk factors for glaucoma. Having certain eye conditions, uh, exfoliation and pigment dispersion, being over age 60, having a family history of glaucoma, uh, and then glaucoma is more common in the African American population, in the Scandinavian population, and in some of the uh, South Asian and uh, Japanese population as well. In acute, acute angle closure glaucoma, uh, the risk factors are a short eye or somebody who's farsighted, certain medications, older age groups because that extra layers in the lens start taking up too much space. And usually the treatment is medication to get the pressure down promptly and then creating an alternate route because you can't get the fluid through here. And we can use lasers instead of normal knife and fork type surgery. So we talked about lifelong monitoring. The treatments are drops, some form of laser surgery or sometimes actually drainage surgery to provide an alternate route. And there's a little clustering of the many kinds of drops that are available. One of the problems with the drops is lots of people develop allergies to the preservatives in them. So although your drop may work, you may end up with a red, sore, irritated eye. Um, they make some non-preserved eye drops. Uh, not everything comes that way, but they're usually special, special orders. Next big disease, age-related macular degeneration. This is probably something you've heard lots about. It's an exciting time because there is more that we can do for it, but the more we can do for it is pretty traumatic for patients. And this picture shows that back of the eye, where the fine vision area is, with all these spots. The simple way of thinking of it is that the um, chemical reaction isn't going so well, and the garbage crew is no longer picking up the garbage at the end of the day. And so your rods and cones chemical breakdown products sit here. And they may sit here and start coalescing or forming new blood vessels. Um, there are multiple risk factors, but the big ones are age greater than 50, smoking, um, much more common in the Caucasian race, having a family history, and then probably some influence of the amount of exercise and diet. So how do we follow macular degeneration? Having eye exams, if you know you have it or you've got a family history of it or your brother has it, get your eyes checked and then you should be given advice about how frequently based on what is found. We do the kind of testing we were talking about with the photographs and the OCT. That Amsler grid I showed you before is something we often give patients to take home to check if we think they're at risk of it changing. If you have the dry kind, which is about 90%, um, vitamin supplementation is helpful. <laughs> Quitting smoking is the single most important thing you can do. This is highly metabolic tissue. And if you're smoking, you're actually not getting enough oxygen and other proper products there. So it's the single biggest thing a person can do. So what diseases uh, that are general also affect the eye? More than 9 million Canadians have diabetes, and it's a tsunami wave coming through. Young people have it because they're not active and they're sedentary and they're not getting exercise and they're eating bad things. 10% only of these people have type 1 diabetes, the kind where you have to have insulin. Type 2 might get treated with it, but it's not insulin dependent. The rest, the other 90% are type 2. And the things that make diabetes happen more frequently are age, obesity, a sedentary lifestyle, it's more common in a couple of population groups that we see, the Aboriginal population, a little bit the Filipino population, and some of the uh, South Asian population. Uh, and then it's probably um, the single biggest cause of other problems, 
like heart attacks and strokes. 80% of diabetics die of a heart attack or stroke. So it leads to changes in blood vessels. The life expectancy is shorter. Um, what could you do to decrease the risk of type 2 diabetes? It, there's been a really good study that showed that 58% decrease in the risks happens with only 30 minutes a day of active exercise and 5% weight loss. So that can be increased for people who are over age 60 to about 71% just doing the same thing. So it's almost like participation logos, logos. Get moving, you know, and stay moving because that's the single best thing you can do for yourself. The other thing is blood pressure and cholesterol are additive to diabetes. And if you don't control them, then the diabetes blood vessel effects are compounded and are worse. Now, these are pictures of some other people where the leakage has happened and probably gone away, but it's left cholesterol behind. And that's patchy and you, you can't see through it. It's like having you know, concrete sitting there. This person has had new blood vessels grow. That's what happens when some of them block off. The body makes new ones and says, feed me, and so the message gets transmitted but they don't have good walls. Typically, these ones break or bleed really easily, and actually they need to be aggressively treated. Here's a, a situation where we know there has to be some of these new blood vessels hiding under there, and there's a bit of cholesterol, and there are these blood patches, and there are these little aneurysms, so this is, you know, one eyeball with the works. Not that untypical. And then some of these little blood vessels are blocked down. Over here is the effect of laser spots. And we laser to get rid of the messages that are making the new blood vessels grow. It helps, but it's not really what you want because you can imagine what's happened here. You've just permanently damaged peripheral retina. It gives you visual field loss. It's spotty or grainy, so it's not like you totally lose it, but it's not normal anymore. This is another set of diseases, and what it says up at the top there above the atherosclerosis is hypertension. High blood pressure uh, has effects on blood vessels that have nothing to do with diabetes. And in fact, in this particular um, set of pictures, there's a white spot here. It's got a fancy name. It's called a Holland horse plaque. That's a piece of cholesterol. How did it get into the blood vessel in your eye? it was in your neck and it breaks off or flakes off the inside and travels and this will shut down the vision further along the st stream so it's sitting in the artery um, one of the nicest cardiologists i know sat next to me about two decades ago at a luncheon we were served cheesecake I like cheesecake. And he looked at it and he said, oh, coronary glue. <laughs> and I've never been able to eat it since then. <laughs> but this is sort of the accumulation of what's going on with your cholesterol and all those other things. The picture next to it is one when the central artery actually completely blocks off and will shut the vision down. Here, uh, both of these pictures of what happened when the vein shuts off instead. Usually if the vein shuts off, the vision will recover to some extent. If the artery goes, it's basically like a stroke in the eye. You've lost the supply, it won't come back. The artery um, may be atherosclerotic, and it's like having a lead pipe sit on your garden hose vein. And that's how these uh, occlusions happen. So it's not so much that the uh, vein has a problem, it's the artery sitting on it because they go through together. And we sit and watch and try to get rid of the blood. And once again, the retina doctors with their injections come at that with Avastin to try and help. Um, I also wanted to remind people that other diseases happen, like arthritis with Plaquenil treatments, and like cancer. And cancer happens as people get older. The current uh, American Cancer Society statistics say that one in two American men and one in three American women are living with cancer. They've had a cancer, it's been treated, but 
they still get all the other things that happen. And so some of the treatments for those things, or the fact that there's a cancer there, are also sometimes responsible for what happens in an eye. And 77% of cancer diagnoses are made after 55 years of age. So it is a disease of older people. The cells start making mistakes. A nice, smart anesthetist showed up in my office one day complaining about funny things in his vision. But he didn't have absent vision. The brain likes to make stuff up. And if you're looking at striped wallpaper, it will make up striped wallpaper. The most likely thing in this case is it would make up a wall that looked like this. But you've got a big gap. And that's a big enough loss that you can't drive a car with it. And it happened because there was a stroke. High blood pressure or atherosclerosis. This gentleman has Parkinson's disease. And his eye movements aren't normal because of that. They don't track well. Uh, when you're waiting for your next dose of medication, you may have a hard time reading. It may even start to turn double because the tracking with the muscles isn't working the way it's supposed to. It comes as a vision complaint, but it's not an eyeball problem. It's something that's driving the eyes. <laughs>